Professor Aram, uh, first of all, many thanks for having uh, accepted to deliver a talk at service tonight uh, and have an immediate question. Uh, Brazil is more and more regarded as a regional uh, player. To what extent could it be challenged by other uh, important players such as uh, Argentina and perhaps uh, Venezuela? Well, um, I mean, historically it's important to remember that the idea of Brazil as a regional leader is quite a new phenomenon. Um, Brazil historically was quite separate, rather distanced from the region. Um, and the other thing historically that's important to remember is that the idea that Brazil was just obviously much more powerful than the other countries of the region, particularly than Argentina, again is a relatively recent phenomenon going back to say, the 1980s. Um, but having said that, it's certainly true that Brazil has, over the past 20 years, and particularly the past 10 years, come to play a much more active, much more assertive uh, role within the region, so that many, many people uh, look at Brazil, look at South America, and think of the country as a natural uh, leader, a natural, if not dominant player, then certainly the major player in the region. Um, but there are a number of crucial limits on that, uh, one of which is, is the one that you ask about, namely the possibility or the existence of challengers or alternative um, claimants to be a major player, a major leader in the region. And in the recent period, uh, Venezuela and Chavez's Venezuela um, is the one that people have often spoken most clearly about, the idea uh, that, if you like, ideologically, politically, in terms of domestic politics, in terms of Venezuela's determination and willingness to challenge the United States, um, in terms of Venezuela's capacity on the back of its oil revenues to provide uh, resources and money for other countries in South America, that there was, an, if not an alternative pole, at least a country with, also with claims to play a regional role. Um, as things turn out, it seems to me that actually the idea of Venezuela as a major alternative regional leader have receded, have declined. Um, Venezuela's uh, capacity internally, its economic capacity to play that sort of role, um, the willingness of other countries to go along with, with Venezuela. All of that seems to be have moved into the background. So in terms of alternative challenges, I don't think it's really true uh, that there are alternative players who could do that uh, versus Brazil. But having said that, there are still major limits facing the idea of Brazil as a regional player. Brazil itself doesn't have a great n amount of resources, say military resources or economic resources, to play the obvious role of a dominant leader. So its strategy has been much more a kind of lower key diplomatic soft power one, um, helping to solve crises and problems, say within Bolivia, promoting uh, loose forms of regional cooperation, so low-level uh, public goods, um, but it doesn't have the resources to be a kind of dominant uh, regional leader. It's unwilling to build the institutions that would entrench that kind of dominance, um, and nor does it, does it really have, or nor is there really a kind of solid domestic constituency inside the country that sees regional leadership being a regional player as a major goal that the country ought to pursue. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, Brazil, as a global player, uh, will more and more uh, share the positions of India and China and, as such, challenge the interests of the US and the Western world? Well, again, um, one might sort of start historically saying that um, Brazil has traditionally had a rather reticent, rather pragmatic, rather low-key uh, foreign policy. So it's, it's sought 
historically to avoid kind of major confrontations. Um, but despite that, there have been periods in the past uh, when Brazil has adopted, if you like, challenges to certain US or Western positions. In the 1970s, uh, for example, uh, which was also a period of Brazil's foreign policy activism, again, a period where many people thought the country was developing, emerging very fast. Um, there were several instances of where the country challenged the United States. Um, it voted, for example, in the United Nations in favor of the resolution condemning Zionism as a form of racism. It recognized the MPLA government in Angola before the United States and in opposition to the United States. So there have been times uh, when Brazil has in the past, if you like, been willing to challenge. Nevertheless, the dominant period, the dominant sort of theme of Brazilian foreign policy has been one of, of reticence of a rather low-key pragmatism. And even in the post-Cold War period, it was that theme uh, that dominated for much of the 1990s during the years of the government of President Cardozo. So yes, Brazil was becoming more active, for example, in the W. WTO. It was taking more and more cases to the WTO dispute settlement um, mechanism. It was activist in that sense, but it was unwilling to challenge in a more overt political sense. Uh, President Cardozo said Brazil is not yet ready to assume a more active international role. Brazil shouldn't seek, for example, to become a member of the Security Council and couldn't, didn't have the basis for claiming to become a member of something like the G8. What has changed in the years under President Lula since 2002 is precisely that greater degree of assertiveness. The idea that Brazil does have a right not just to make its own claims about its foreign policy and its foreign policy interests on the back of, if you like, hard economic interests. So arguing in the WTO together with India, uh, forcing Europe and the United States to take developing country positions more seriously. So in the WTO, we've moved from a situation where the organization was dominated um, historically by uh, Europe, the United States, and Japan to a situation where it's now dominated by the new, the so-called new quad, uh, United States, Europe, India, and Brazil. Um, and there, Brazil is prepared to play quite a hard line asserting its own positions and the positions of developing countries in negotiations with Europe and the United States. Um, on climate change, as we saw in Copenhagen, uh, Brazil has been active and um, in speaking for uh, developing countries as well as for itself in arguing um, for the sort of climate change regime uh, that it believes there have to be. So there's been that kind of institutional activism. There's also been institutional activism um, in the United Nations with Brazil resuming its campaign uh, for sec a Security Council seat. What's interesting about the recent, and particularly the latter part of the years of um, President Lula, was that we seem to move even a little further towards, if you like, a kind of more overt challenge. And the clearest example of that um, through uh, 2010 um, was Brazil's willingness to become more closely involved with Iran and to directly challenge United States preferences um, on Iran. After all, this was an issue of central importance to the United States. One might have said historically, this is an issue which is clearly secondary or minor or marginal importance to a country like Brazil. And yet this was an issue uh, where, the United, where Brazil was willing directly to challenge and to oppose uh, US preferences and to incur substantial opposition, confrontation, vilification inside the United States against what it did. So the pictures of President Lula in Tehran embracing President Ahmadinejad um, were very badly received in Washington and seemed to be a very clear symbol of Brazil being willing, if you like, to put its head above the parapet and to say, yes, we have interests. Yes, we want to play a role. Those interests aren't just interests that reflect our immediate interests. They reflect our belief that we have a broader role to play uh, in international affairs, even if that role uh, brings us into, if not confrontation, at least into a certain kind of friction with the United States. Mm -hmm.